Hello, hello. Welcome back. Today I will be doing a review of the new Juice World album, Death Race for Love. Um, this just came out um, on Friday and it has uh, 22 tracks. And that's quite a lot. Uh, if you compare that to his previous album, Goodbye and, and Good Riddance, uh, that's um, that's almost twice as long when you consider that if you take out all the skits from the other album and um, if you don't include the deluxe edition which had Wasted and Armed and Dangerous uh, it says 22 compared to, to that one only having 12 songs so it's almost twice as long which to be honest I'm fine with um, I'm just going to preface it right now um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big Juice World fan to be honest, I don't even know why. Um, it's just I don't I, everything that he makes I just enjoy. It's just he's just kind of like one of those guys for me where it's like all of his like, like all of his uh, everything that he puts out I enjoy pretty much. Um, yeah, I mean I I can't relate to it at all. Um, I don't do drugs. I haven't really had a serious relationship ever. I live in like a like a middle class area. I'm not poor, but I don't know. He he just makes good music. I think. So uh, how I'm gonna do this? Uh, I'm just gonna go through each song real quick, and then I'll give my overarching opinions, and then I'll give a score for it. So uh, let's get into it then. Uh, first song, Empty. Uh, it's a good, it's pretty much exactly what you'd think Juice World is, um, pretty good intro for the, for the album, you know, pretty much just talking how, he had, you know, like his heart is empty, you know, he's, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it really, um, I, I think it's good, I think, uh, it's a very good instrumental, and I think he did a pretty good job with it. Our second track is Maze, uh, I like this one a lot too, again, a great instrumental, the production on this is quite good i believed and uh with maze which is just talking how he feels like he's uh trapped in a maze now now it's hard for him to you know figure things out now that he's uh famous and stuff and um yeah i really enjoy it that's a good one too it starts out really good the, the whole the whole album starts out really good and uh third track track uh he he motions emotions i don't i don't know how you say it but it's just saying how he has like emotions for someone he doesn't really know what to do um yeah just talking about he's getting pretty emotional i mean it's pretty much what you think just world is i mean he's not really going really out on a limb really with with any of these songs but if you like just world then you're gonna love those because they're all what you would expect from uh four uh is the interlude with uh Brent Fiaz. Um I'm not a big fan of this. Um, I don't know, but it's it's just an interlude. I didn't think it was really that good. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of uh, his voice really that much, but it's just an it's just an interlude, so I don't really care that much. It's just a, a s small thing, really. Um, five is fast. Uh, this is one that it seems like a, like a lot of people are really uh, enjoying quite a bit. Um, he basically just talking about how he's going super fast now, can't really take his time to in, to in, uh, enjoy things anymore. You know, all he's saying is his his life is moving really fast, and he has like kind of like a small, like a like a quieter voice. You know, it's a little more chill than his what like his like other songs are. Uh, some of his other songs are it's really good. I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, Six, hear me calling. That was the second um, single from the album. Uh, it's pretty good. It's just kind of like, you know, kind of like a, uh, like a, like a pop song, really. Uh, there isn't much there, but I, I do like it. I, I think it gets a little bit of, uh, unnecessary hate, to be honest. Uh, next one is Big. Uh, this one's a little weird. It's kind of a little different than what he usually does. He, he's not talking about, like, heartbreak, really, or depression, or, like, the drugs he was saying, how he's, like, you know, he's been making it big, you know, he's been going big. He, He's kind of flexing, really. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's all it's all right. I'm not a big fan. It doesn't really sound like him. It's it's a little different, but you know, I I still think it's good, but it's not my favorite. Uh, not next is Robbery. The first single was released like a month ago, I think. It um, I really like the hook on it. The 
verses. I'm not, they're not that good, but the hook is really good. I like the beat. It's a little, it's a little like, um, uh, a little darker. Uh, kind of, uh, some people like it. I don't, I don't really like it that much. It's good, but it's not great in my opinion. But I, I do like the hook a lot. Uh, next is Flaws and Sins. Uh, this is probably my favorite on the album. Uh, uh, to be honest, it's just talking about how he's with someone because I'm pretty sure he has a girlfriend now. So he just kind of talks about, um, on some songs talks about, you know, how, how he feels and stuff. And I don't know if this is directly talking about her, but he's saying how he's, he's with someone and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm in love with all your flaws and sins, you know, and that a weird way of giving compliments. That's like the hook and, I think it's good. I really like it. it. Kind of reminds me of like, of like what Candles was kind of. That was my favorite song um, on his on his other album, and it kind of kind of reminds me of that in a sense. Uh, I really like it. It's really good. Really good. Uh, I think he, he he does a great job. He kind of changes his voice to like a little bit more of like a, like a raspy tone, which I enjoyed quite a bit. And uh, next is Feeling. This sounds this kind of sounds like it should have been on Goodbye and Good Riddance. Uh, it sounds very similar to what you would expect from him. Really, nothing crazy. Just talking about how, like the, like the, at the perch give him a feeling. He talks about really drugs and the, and the girls. Pretty much everything you expect from him, to be honest. Uh, next up, is syphilis. This one's probably the most interesting out of all of them. He's really angry. Um, it's like a, it's like screaming, screams quite a lot, it's really loud, really angry, mm-hmm. uh, kind of sounds like, uh, a lot of people say it sounds like X, but I think it sounds more like Ski Mask, to be honest, but, but then again, I'm not really a big fan of either of those artists, so, I mean, it's, it's good, it's probably my least favorite, though, it's just, I, I like what he was trying to do, but I just don't like that kind of music, to be honest, so, I'll say that's my least favorite. And that's up, Who Shot Cupid. I, uh, this one I really like. I really like it, to be honest. It talks about, like, the love and stuff. I can't really, I, I can't really, like, recall exactly what it was, but I really enjoy it. I thought it was really good, really good. Um, he's, he sang on it really well. I, I think it's one of the more underrated songs on the album from what I've seen. Last up is uh, Ring Ring featuring Clever. Another feature. There's three features total. This is the second feature. This I can see this one being like the third single on the album. It's it, it definitely sounds like he made it to be a single, and I I really like it. It's just like and and the feature is good too. I, I like the singing voice. I've never heard of Clever before. But I might have to check him out after the feature. That was a great hook, great verse. Uh, he did a really good job on it, I thought. Next up is uh, Desire. Uh, this is again, uh, it's talking about, it's like a more like an upbeat track, I think. It's it, like it's, instead of talking about heartbreak, he's like talking about how, like he finally found like the one that he wants, like, like the one that he wants to spend his life with. And you know, it's it just, it's like a feel good song, you know. You, really kind of feel for him there because he's always really good at getting out his emotions and this record's no different i think uh it's really good uh another one of my favorites um next up out my way uh some of the best rapping that i've ever heard from just Wood, to be honest um really he he just kind of flexing saying you know get out my way like i'm better than you um good instrumental really good uh I like how he changes his uh voice kind of um really interesting really good I, th- I felt on uh, next up is the bees knees uh it's a long song it's like five and a half minutes one of the longest i've ever heard from him and um <clears throat> excuse me but i do enjoy it it starts out uh there's a um there's a beat switch halfway through and i like how it switches adds a like a whole different like dimension to the song um he's uh he reads pretty good on this too like like these end songs, uh, the, like, the last couple songs here, he really does a good job with, uh, the lyrics, something that I haven't really heard from him that much, um, it's kind of like a different side to him, I think, and I thought he did a good job, especially with the beat switch, that was really good, really unique. Our next up is On God, featuring Young Thug, another feature, it sounds like a Young Thug song, so if you're a fan of Young Thug, you'll probably love this one, um, he did a good job with it. 
Uh, I really like it. Um, it's not one of my favorites, but it's still pretty good. I mean, I I like I like all the songs on the album, to be honest. So this one, uh, I thought Young Thug did a great job. He's he's the final feature on it, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Next up is a uh, Ten Feet, another one, another one of my favorites. Probably my favorite instrumental on the album. Really unique. I think they they sampled it from something. I'm not sure where, but it's really good. Probably the best the best uh, production. And uh, again, like this, like, just like the straight rapping on it, really good. He, it's uh, some r- really good lyrics. I felt, um, yeah, I can't say enough. It's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, pretty, pretty underrated too. I, I haven't seen a lot of people say much about that one either. They usually talk about like you know, out my way and stuff. But I thought this one was really good. Uh, next stuff, won't let go. Another song, kind of like uh, like a love song. Right, just saying like I I won't let go, you know. I want to be with you. Same with uh, she's the one next. Um, again, because I think he's in a he's in a better place in his life now. I think he's a little happier, so it's still he's able to make these songs, which is good, you know. I feel good for him, you know. I don't want him to go through what he went through before. Uh, so yeah. Next up, Ryder. Uh, Rider. It sounds very similar to something else. I'm not sure what the other song is, but it sounds similar to something. But I do like it. It's really good. It's kind of like, um, let's see if you were Rider. I don't know how that goes, but it's like, it's really good. I, th- I thought it was really good. Um, and then the last song is Make Believe. Uh, it's a song. I think he's telling some kind of story. I think about him and some girl. How he, he's like, okay, I don't, I don't care if we die, and they're like super in love. It's uh, pretty good, pretty interesting. It's like in, um, it's like what, it's, uh, like what Stan was with um, Eminem. Interesting, very good. So that's all the tracks there. Now my final thoughts. Uh, it is a bit long, and a lot of people might not like that. Um, he definitely played things for the streaming, you know, to get to get extra money. But it it didn't feel like he forced you, kind of. If, if you know what I mean. It seems like all all those songs are so good. There was like time put into them, you know. And it's you know, so it's a lot more juice for like who can complain really, right? And um, I thought uh, since uh, his first album. I thought this one had clearly a lot better uh, production value, a lot more money put into it, and it really showed. I think the songs are really good, really quality. Is it better to think goodbye and good riddance? I mean, I don't know. That's up to you. I mean, I, I like them both, but obviously I'll have to listen to this one more before I really determine uh, my favorite. But uh, I like it, and uh, unlike what Little Pump's album was, this one it seemed like he didn't wear off what his, like, like his uh, style was, like what his aesthetic was, like how like how Lil Pump kind of did, like with like on on his first album, like like the like the bad production and like uh, like the weird like kind of like a goofy aesthetic. It really worked, but with like a higher production, it kind of like wore off a bit. But with Juice Roar, I think he really found a way to refine his sound and make it really a high quality album. And in that regard, I thought he had. Uh, a bit of a different, a uh, little more uh, variety with how he, he did it. Changed his voice quite a bit. Had some good lyrics, um, good s- styles, and he used his features properly too. He, he didn't seem like he just used them for like the recognition or like the clout, which is good. I always respect that. Uh, it's always nice not having features, even though if if you can use them right, he seems to be able to carry. Uh, an entire album of this length by himself for the most part, which is quite a, a uh, quite a talent to be honest. Uh, it really shows his uh, his uh, potential as an artist. So, well, with that said, I think I'll give it an eight out of ten. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my review. Uh, if anyone sees this, you can leave a like. Uh, you can subscribe. You can uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want. Um, I'll try to get some more gameplay videos up. I haven't done that in a while. I'll try to get some more. I've just been pretty busy the last couple of days. But uh, yeah, sure, you can leave your own score, leave your own thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, that's how a little peep died.